Welcome to Free Thought in Florida, the newly named Free Thought in Florida, <laughs> voted on by the uh, members of our group. Uh, so this is July 12th, 2019. Uh, I'm Sarah, and I'm here with Allison, and we are going to talk today about uh, education. So sort of broadly, some things that are going on specifically here in Polk County. Um, but first, the uh, Free Thought in Florida is a production of the Atheist Community of Polk County, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the separation of church and state, educating the public on a set the value of a secular government, and promoting evidence-based education, among with there's five or six different bullet points that we identified when we set the group up. But, you know, sure. it's community building and, uh, and doing charity work and good things out in the community. Yep. Uh, so the first thing I sort of wanted to talk about is um, a, a letter that we sent to Superintendent Jacqueline Bird and the uh, school board members of the Polk County School District uh, over some issues that we had during graduations. Okay. So in, in May, uh, at the end of May, we had our high school graduations, and there were, uh, all of these were filmed and put on YouTube. And so we found ourselves watching them, looking for uh, various things that might be violations. You know, again, we're looking at the separation of church and so state. So even now, these are all accessible to anybody yeah. who would want to watch. Okay. Yep. They are on That's the they are on the Polk Schools um, YouTube channel. Okay. And uh, we, what we discovered was about four schools had formal invocations or, or prayers, and that's something that um, I think a lot of people don't really think about mm -hmm. as being a big deal. Right. Right. No, it's just a prayer. It's a, it, it'll be over in 30 seconds. It's fine. We'll, we'll get on with the <laughs> right. graduation, right? Exactly. Um, but it, this all sort of started when two parents in our group reached out to us and said, hey, um, I wanted to tell you about something that happened to my child. As they were at the graduation practice, uh, doing sort of a rehearsal, they would uh, they came across the stage, and you know mocked through you know handshakes, and then as they came down off the stage, down the stairs, there was a strange man whom they'd never met, with a stack of Gideon Bibles, handing them out. Congratulations, here's a Bible. That would be interesting. Yeah. And so both of these parents said that they, you know, uh, their children l left the books in their seats and, you know, didn't really uh, take it seriously, but we did. And sure. uh, so, um, so I thought, how do we approach this, right, as, as a community, as an organization? Um, and that sent us down sort of a, a, a rabbit trail of investigating the history. And obviously, when things like this happened, one of the first things we can do is turn to the Freedom from Religion Foundation, right. who do a lot of work around this. And um, you know, and they would happily send a letter uh, to the school district um, saying, "Hey, here, here are the violations of church and state and the court pr precedent that backs it up." And then we learned that that had already been done. Really? Yes. So. In 2016, the Freedom from Religion Foundation sent a letter to the Polk County School Superintendent regarding Bible distributions at graduations. And in 2017, a letter regarding prayers at graduations. And so for those letters to have been sent by the FFRF, a concerned parent would have had to reach out to them. Right. Right. Or an organization like ours that, that relayed it on. So... So what was concerning to me was we have, uh, they know. Exactly. They've been made aware, and yet this is still happening. This is still an issue. I guess my question is, so, I mean, just in general, to have a strange man that none of these children, these young people know, mm -hmm. does the faculty know? Someone had to have given permission? this person permission. Right. And we don't know who that is. Okay. Um, and, and again, like this is, 
really, we're just sort of diving into it. Uh, being a, a newish organization, mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of hit us at the right moment, right? We didn't have a lot of time to um, to build up and plan for it, right? There are things that you can do that we can do going forward in future years that will help us learn more about that process and what's happened and who might have, you know, given the okay and that sort of thing. Yes. But at this point, for these, uh, we're not really sure. So some mysterious man materialized. <laughs> to the, you know, you can't come in, you can't even go into a school without signing off. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you can come into a graduation and hand out literature and yeah. no one knows who you are. That's pretty creepy. Yep. Um, so, so we wrote a letter and we sort of took a different approach from what the FFRF has in the past and, and would do again, uh, again, which is very much from a, a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. And we said, you know, look, yes, there are, uh, some serious violations of church and state separation. Um, but also what this does is it creates the environment of, of an us versus them, of an in-group, out-group, where the students and families who are in the audience, who are in attendance at these graduations, uh, if they don't belong to that particular faith, right? and let's be honest, they, they were all Christian, um, then, then it, it creates that divisive environment. So, you know, we're looking at... Um, a, a, t a time when bullying is a huge issue and and our schools are scrambling to try to address mental health issues in the schools. Sure. And this kind of stuff, while too many may seem like, eh, it's just a prayer, or you could have said no to the Bible, It it's more than that. It's deeper than that. Absolutely. You know, and... And I, I always love to play the uh, the flipped coin, right? If if we live in a majority Christian area, which we do, mm -hmm. um, how would all of these parents feel about uh, an imam handing out copies of the Quran? Certainly. So, you know, again, that just kind of puts the the jots and tittles on um, why remaining neutral towards religion and and keeping church and state separate protects everybody, right? It, it's to the benefit of all. Absolutely. And to your point, like you said, I think sometimes things for a particular region or area become so normal that even if you are not a, let's say, devout participant mm -hmm. in a particular belief system or what, it just seems like, ah, eh, that's what we do. Right. You know, that's, that's, that's part of what our community does. But you're right, at the core level, it really is. It, it's hard to see unless mm -hmm. you're from the outside. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, if you if you went to another area and let's say, like you said, they were handing out the Vedas or they were right. they were handing out the Quran, you would immediately be reacting. Yeah. And it's it's that how do we get people to understand that it it really is divisive. Not because we're just trying to make a big deal of things, but but because that's part of what being an American is, is respecting the differences in people. And you automatically essentially put one belief, one mm -hmm. idea above all else yep. by saying this is the most important thing you could have as you go into your adult life. Let's hand it to you. <laughs> right yes, now. right. So, and, yeah. And then in, in the prayers, you know, again, this was not a generic you know, dear God, you know, th you know, thank you for, for <laughs> right. all the wonderful blessings that we've received and helping us pass all those tests. And no, it was a very specific, like some of them even said, uh, a, a calling for God to understand our purpose. Um, they read scripture. Um, one of them was uh, asking that God would cast his light upon the graduates and to guide them on a path that ultimately leads them closer to you. Uh, that's that's a sermon. That's not a prayer. Right. And those are very specific phrases that are used yes. within a calling. Mm hmm. Right. Um, this is not the altar call at the. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> at the graduation <laughs> ceremony. <laughs> right. And yet it's being used. 
Yeah. You know, it, it sounds like it's subtle and it's kind of like, why you make a big deal over that? Mm-hmm. But it is a big deal. If you know enough about, um, if you know enough about that particular belief system, yes. you know, they really are calling out very specific things. I mean, if I, if I asked you about certain Hindu gods mm-hmm. or said, you know, can you cast their light down? I mean, people would be appalled. Yes. They would be freaking out. <laughs> um, but you point out this one and it's like, yeah, yeah that's what our, we're used to it. Yeah, we're, yeah, used, we're to it. used to it. Exactly. Um, so again, we just, we sort of uh, tried to make it more about, you know, creating an inclusive environment that the diversity is a good thing. Um, and that, you know, uh, allowing this sort of thing, uh, puts those non-religious students in, in an awkward position. Sure. Um, and the, the interesting thing that we then found on this issue was, so uh, let me back up, right? So legally, mm-hmm. the, the graduation issue is a tough one because of standing. So your student went to graduation, someone handed them a Bible, they said some prayers, blessings, God bless the class of 2019. Right. And then your student is no longer a student and no longer has standing to bring a lawsuit. Uh, So that's hmm. been a challenging thing to figure out legally. Hmm. However, we also then found that these actions are uh, appear to be in direct conflict with the Polk County School Board's own bylaws and policies, which state, quote, the district shall not act as a disseminating agent for any person or outside agency for any religious or anti-religious document, book, or article. And, quote, the board shall not include religious invocations, benedictions, or formal prayer at any school-sponsored event. So it seems like both of these issues tend to go against what the, at least when the school board created these, these bylaws and policies, uh, yes. felt should be done. That's pretty clear language. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, these are the sorts of things that we're, we're watching um, here locally you know, there's there's a sort of history in Polk County with with and we've talked about this briefly before um, w- with some other groups who have chosen to fall on different swords. Um, but this is this is sort of the thing that that we are kind of specifically watching for. Um, and and that said, you know, we want to make it clear that the the mission statement of the atheist community of Polk County includes educating the public about the value of a secular government and protecting the separation of church and state. So when it comes to public schools, right, we'll call issues out when there are issues and we'll give you a pat on the back when you're getting it right too. Sure. Um, As secular people, we value the public education system. Right. And, and that must remain neutral towards religion. Um, But also that, the public schools have to be leaders in protecting kids from discrimination. Yes. And that's that's what I expect of public taxpayers. That's my tax dollars at work, right? That's what I would expect of, of public schools. Right. So then you have private schools, which have been, you know, largely allowed to just dance all over that. And in Florida, we had another voucher program added to the books mm. to divert public money towards these private schools. Um, and and on this issue, we stand with our public schools. So the Florida Education Association dropped a, a hot zinger on their website last week about, uh, or a couple weeks ago, about private voucher schools and Step Up for Students. And Step Up for Students is the largest voucher organization that solicits contributions for these schools beyond tax dollars. Okay. Right? So corporations that you probably give money to then turn around and give that money to schools like this. So let me read you a few quotes from this article from the FEA. They write, Step Up has done a very good job of convincing many Florida corporations that its primary purpose is to help provide private school vouchers to poor, mostly minority students, attending failing public schools. 
While we can never compete with Step Up's financial resources, we are armed with something even more powerful, the truth. We know that the vast majority of students who use vouchers were performing well in their public schools. We know this because the heads of the very private schools that accept vouchers have said as much when they are asked. Furthermore, we know that the vast majority of parents didn't take their child out of a public school because the school was failing. On the contrary, parents who use vouchers overwhelmingly do so explicitly because they want their children to have taxpayers subsidize a religious education. Again, we know this because parents have repeatedly told us. In fact, parents have been so explicit about their desire for a religious education that when Step Up for Students gives seminars to parents on how to advocate to lawmakers for voucher expansion, the organization cautions parents against mentioning their true reason for seeking out vouchers. Oh my. They include a graphic here titled, Choose Your Words Carefully, which suggests that parents should avoid religious names, religious text, religious beliefs, prayer, wow. prayer in schools, Bible quotes, religious imagery, or small class sizes and instead use phrases like shared values, peaceful setting, safety, support, high graduation rates, contributing to the public good, breaking the cycle of generational poverty, and individualized instruction. Wow. The FEA continues, it turns out Step Up has a good reason to try to keep parents' true motives concealed. Many of these private schools accepting taxpayer dollars are steeped in bigotry, especially anti-LGBTQ bigotry. Check out these examples from student parent handbooks across the state. And they included several of these, uh, but I pulled a couple. So you have Winter Haven Christian School says, certain items such as Pokemon, Goosebumps, and Harry Potter, of all things, of all things, are not allowed at school because of their controversial nature. Now, this isn't so much of a church state thing right it's just ridiculous right. <laughs> like are we still in the satanic panic it's, can we not oh, can't listen to rock and roll exactly Ugh. right Winter elvis ha- is bad yes yeah <laughs> don't play the record backwards okay. winter haven christian also says proper roles regarding marriage gender roles and homosexuality are also spelled out in our statement of faith and the enrollment contract any breach in that contract will result in immediate expulsion of the children from winter haven christian school Then from Calvary City Christian Academy and Preschool in Orlando, on occasion, the atmosphere or conduct within a particular home may be counter or in opposition to the biblical lifestyle Calvary City Christian Academy and Preschool teaches. This includes, but is not necessarily limited to, sexual immorality, homosexual, and transgender orientation. Calvary City reserves the right, within its sole discretion, to refuse admission of an applicant or to discontinue enrollment of a student. Mm. Um, and when we first start, sort of started speaking out on the, this whole issue, um, I posted several of the, the Polk County Religious Schools um, policies to our Facebook page. Okay. I researched all of them. Uh, and of course, if you somehow missed the big uh, Pastor Tiger kerfuffle in Auburndale, that's worth some research. But uh, basically, Pastor Tiger uh, is his nickname. He was the headmaster slash pastor slash coach slash seventh grade ish teacher uh, at Kingdom Preparatory School, a K-12 school in Auburndale, who was accused of grooming and molesting a boy who attended the school. Mm. And beyond just the accusations, Polk County Sheriff's Department listened in on phone calls between them where the boy said he was uncomfortable staying at Pastor Tiger's home. Oh, by the way, he had students living with him. That was a thing. Uh, And the student also said during these calls that he didn't like it when Pastor Tiger kissed and touched him. Oh, my. Kimberly C. Moore reported in The Ledger on June 19th that, quote, student expenses at Kingdom Prep were paid almost exclusively by several of the seven state scholarship or voucher programs. So here you have, and right, the problem is... It's an issue that a student was abused, yes. Mm. Uh, but but also, and we know that happens in all sorts of environments, right? Not just private Christian schools or churches, but those do seem to be rampant lately. Um, and while that is a, a big concern, th- there, there's an issue that 
there's no oversight at all to these voucher schools. So you have a a school, a K-12 school, who receives almost all of their funding through the voucher programs. And then when something goes wrong, who do you go to? There's no state agency that's really providing any oversight to any of this. Um, and in in the case of this Pastor Tiger fiasco, there was um, there were parents who were struggling to get the records for their students to transfer them to another school to, wow. to show that, oh, I actually did get an education here. I did complete, you know, fourth Hopefully. and fifth grades or yes, whatever. right. So um, th- all of that is a sad story, but is more common than we'd like. Um, school board member Billy Townsend when was asked for a comment about Kingdom Prep records, noted that the public school board has no jurisdiction in such matters and, and offered some political solutions, right? You need to be reaching out to your lawmakers and saying, what the hell? Sure. Um, but he also mentioned that the vast majority of Florida kids abandon vouchers in two years or less because of experiences like this. Thankfully, he says public education is here and ready to take them back and serve them as best we can. So that was sort of a long rabbit trail uh, to go down, but I think this sort of exemplifies the problems that we have with private religious schools receiving taxpayer dollars, um, which Florida seems to just absolutely love, despite the Blaine Amendment and the Bush v. Bush v. Holmes ruling. Right. Um, but but to the article, uh, the the piece by the FEA, they're calling out these corporations now who are taking the money that we spend with them and donating them to these voucher programs in school. So um, if that's a thing that you're, you know, if you want to vote with your dollar, uh, that's a thing that you can find. And, and I can put a link to that in the, uh, in the notes of this as well. I just, I had several epiphanies that Uh happened as you were explaining that because, you know, part of me says, all right, what does a parent do? if they they truly believe they're in an area where a private school would be better. Mm-hmm. However, like you're mentioning, to have no oversight or or um, rulings on, like you said, to protect the neutrality. Yeah. It, I mean, how do you keep separation of church and state? And, you know, what is a parent? You're a parent. So... Mm-hmm. So what is a parent to do if they truly believe that that the the public school system in that area for whatever reason might not be optimal? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, why it, it it just makes no sense there would be absolutely no oversight. I mean, that school could be doing and teaching anything. Mm-hmm. Um and they are. And they are. As evidenced by the issues where uh, if you are a student and you come out as gay, they can expel you from the school. You're done. You don't go to school here anymore. If you, they, there's almost no requirements on what you need to have uh, education-wise to be a teacher at one of these schools. Um, that, that's not guided by any state requirements either. Sure. Um, but if you come in and you're a teacher and you're gay, yeah, they can go, nope, you can't work here. And it seems so illogical because you have this whole grading system in the public school, you know, the the requirements to meet all these criteria, and there's so much debate on how worthy those, you know, those measures are. Mm -hmm. But then you're saying at the same time, you know, if you want to ship your kid off to, and I shouldn't say that, I'm sure parents are well-meaning, but if you want to send a kid to another school... And use taxpayer funding to do so because you don't like the public schools. They don't have to meet any requirements yeah. at all. I mean, th- in terms of just logic, it mm-hmm. it doesn't seem I, rational I, at all. And I think that's maybe where I sort of find the divergence of, you know, because folks will say, um, well, if I choose for my child not to go to the public schools, then my kid, the money that would have gone to my child should go with them wherever they end up going to school. That's kind of their argument. Of, right. But um, if 
and, and I think this is a large reason why lawmakers are resistant to uh, putting in place those measures and uh, creating an oversight organization that's in charge of this. Um, w once they start doing that, it sure starts looking a lot like the public schools. You can't, mm. you can't uh, you discriminate in hiring. You can't discriminate which students you get. Once there's governmental oversight, then then it basically becomes a whole lot more like a public school than what these parents are wanting from their school. I True. Think. I can see that. Yeah. So there's there's sort of a, a resistance in those uh, couple of things. Which which unfortunately, and I know there's not an easy answer to this, but it g makes it an all or nothing yeah. kind of thing, which is. Uh, so growing up, I went to both public and Christian schools, and um, I have a sister who um, was pregnant when she was 15. And of course, in the school we we went to, there was no sexual education taught. Sure. Uh, obviously, that was you know uh, not appropriate mm -hmm. according to their standards. And then um, both she and her boyfriend were kicked out. Uh, amazingly, they're together to this day, wow. and they've been, uh, she's 38. So they've been together since they were 15 years old. Wow. They, they've outlasted most marriages. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, the the way they were, were treated was abysmal. And the only reason I bring that up is that's just one small example. I mean, say someone's child is in a situation where they're not getting um, certain types of education or for whatever reason... It's just like, oh, it, um, who was the first pastor that, or, or it was the first thing that you read that said, basically, if you don't live up to our credo, even as a family in your mm -hmm. personal life, you're out of here. Yep. Well, what happens if you've paid tuition to that school? And w what gives the school the right to deny you education Right. at that point? Because yep. they have a philosophical, I mean, this isn't like, you know, your kid came in here and tried to kill other students or right. something that really, I mean, this is yep. just a philosophical difference. And, um, and it's essentially you're being denied education at that point. Right. And yet at the same time, I see what you're saying about, you know, they're afraid it's going to get too close to the public school system. Mm -hmm. So what's the point anyway? Right. I think there's some risk involved if you're a parent considering private school. Um, and, and, and if this is true mm -hmm. in that um, that largely parents aren't trying to escape a failed public school, they're looking for a religious education. Right. All of that being true, then I think as a parent, you have to recognize, like, I'm putting some risk into this. Mm, right. That. Yeah, that, there's a risk reward. Yeah. That you'll have to consider. And, and I think when when you look at the data, when you look at the uh uh, the methodology behind the data, I think it's it's fair to say that that risk is not worth the supposed reward, right? You get a lot of mm. um, a lot of these private schools come out and, and claim like how great their students testing scores are and how well you know, like academic achievement and graduation rates and all of this stuff. Sure. Until you understand that when they're looking through all of the applicants who want to come to this school they can just pick and choose who they want. Absolutely. Oh, this kid's already an A student. We want that one. Yeah. Eh, not so sure about this one. Correct. <laughs> it, it's not a fair comparison. It's not, <laughs> not like a all. random controlled trial right. where you're, yeah, you're choosing Meanwhile, randomly. the public schools serve exactly. everyone openly, equally, and anyway, that's the long story of... And, and another thing I would, <laughs> I would say to parents who, um, and to be fair, I'm not a parent. However... I was the oldest of five children. I was sent to a private Christian school. Um, and I have nieces and nephews who currently go, you know, who I love very much and, and, and go to those systems. And anybody who is not, let's say, of the, you know, fundamentalist evangelical persuasion, mm -hmm. I, I would say if it's truly the fact that you are trying to choose a private school because you really believe the area that you've moved from, uh, I mean, I've heard some parents say from the Northeast that the schooling system is very different mm -hmm. as other parts of the country, other parts of the world, that know that private and religious, I mean, and like you said, there there is an attempt to couch private, mm -hmm. or, or I should say couch religious under 
this umbrella of being a private school. And there's a right. lot more to it than that. There is a, a huge philosophical difference because um, in, in sports and other things, we did compete against the very few <laughs> neutral private schools that yep. had no you know, religious backing at all. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very different thing. So I, I would encourage anybody, I know if I had children and I was thinking in that, uh, that vein, um, I would really research it, you know, find out what the philosophies are. Yeah. But you're right. It's it's not an easy question um, because, yeah, how do you make a fair comparison when people are, uh, you know, basically they get to pick whoever they want yeah. to represent their school and then they get to say, wow, we're the best Look ever. Look how great we are. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, another thing that sort of comes up, and um, be mindful of time here. Sure. Um, is what is being taught and who decides it. So um, here mm. in Florida, in twenty and in the the private school situation, right? They're they are completely free to teach uh, that evolution is made up and the creation story is the gospel truth. Uh, that you know, the literal six thousand year old Earth, or that the yes, I grew up in a school. <laughs> it was uh, I think twelve thousand was 12, our max. Yeah. yeah, it was about twelve thousand. Um, or that you know, climate change isn't real. Um. So in 2017, we did, we had we did have a law passed that enabled any community member, whether they had students or not, to challenge uh, course materials that were being used in in the public schools. And that was a change where before it was you had to be have have a child in the school. Okay. And now it's any Florida resident can come in and challenge what's being taught in the schools. So obviously this is ripe for targeting that list of things, right? Uh, evolution, probably the top of that list. But, um, it, you know, and all of this kind of comes from our position of wanting to uh, express the value of evidence-based, scientifically and medically accurate uh, things in curriculum. Absolutely. Uh, and so we, we, aren't, we aren't doing that. We get things like creation uh, presented alongside evolution as an as a theory as equal because we uh, we're not teaching equal, yes. we're not teaching what the word theory means in science um and we get things like abstinence only sex ed and i think i i think i would like to do just a full show on sex education sort mm -hmm. of pulled out separately but um but there's another news story that falls into this category of of teaching accurately in our schools and who can challenge those things. But if you're interested in the, the sex ed conversation and you're here local, you're part of Polk, Polk County, um, w at our monthly meeting this month, uh, we have a speaker that's going to come in and, and talk about that. Okay. Um, and I, I'll give, I'll give, I won't even bury the lead. I'll give away the, the punchline. The Polk County School District used to teach comprehensive sex education. Okay. And then that changed. And so uh, a lot of this is about, as people who value scientifically accurate education, how do we work together with other groups and stakeholders to be the solution to that problem and get our schools teaching medically accurate information again? Uh, Saturday, July 27th at 2 p.m. at the Lake Wales Public Library uh, is that meeting if you want to learn more about that issue. So, <laughs> Wow. This is a story that just sort of dropped, and uh, and it goes back a bit. It started in, in April of 2018, where a parent wrote to the principal of Spanish River High School, um, and this is in Palm Beach County, so this is not our turf, but um, the child had had been given some... It, it was, the situation was interesting around teaching of the Holocaust, now, I can't understand why teaching a historical thing would be uh, such a, uh, I don't know, contentious issue, but apparently it was. So this parent wrote to the principal, we are aware that there was a speaker one night at school this year and that there is a Hol Holocaust studies class offered. However, these offerings are attended by only a minority of students and they're optional. We would like to know in what ways and what classes is Holocaust education being provided to all of the students. Um, and she referenced the Florida mandate to include Holocaust education each year in the students' uh, curriculum. Well, the principal 
William Latson responded saying that the school had a, quote, variety of activities for Holocaust education, but this came with a very alarming caveat. The letter was obtained by the Palm Beach Post states, quote, as far as Holocaust studies and the curriculum, it can be dealt with in a variety of ways. The curriculum is to be introduced, but not forced upon individuals, as we all have the same rights, but not all the same beliefs. End quote. So this Max, he left that very open ended uh, beliefs regarding yes so so this smack says like look not everybody believes the Holocaust happened so we're not we can't force kids to learn it did anybody ha, I mean to your knowledge has anybody approached him to ask is that what he meant by that statement there were some back and forth okay. um, between this particular parent and the principal um, she sent a second letter uh, asking for clarification. And the, the, the response was, the clarification is that not everyone believes the Holocaust happened. Oh, my. And you have your thoughts, but we are a public school and not all of our parents have the same beliefs, so they will react differently. My thoughts or beliefs have nothing to do with this because I am a public servant. I have the role to be politically neutral, but support all groups in the school. I work to expose students to certain things, but not all parents want their students exposed. So they will not be, and I can't force that issue. There was not a bit of punctuation in that sentence. This is a principle. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Obviously down, not a uh, grammar <sighs> uh, specialist. But... One, one must understand that in a public school setting, the school can't take a position, but provide information and allow parents to work with their students on what they want their children to understand. So I have to break into this, uh, this letter to, again, like, as I read this, this is the sentence structure, the sort of grammar. This is the principle. <sighs> My question is, did we land on the moon? Sure. <laughs> Some people believe we didn't, so you, now we can't teach no, that either. No, we can't either. teach the moon landing. All right. I, I don't mean to be snarky, but, no, yeah, but it, it, yes. it falls in that category. Yeah. Uh, I can't say the Holocaust is a factual historical event because I am not in a position to do so as a school district employee. I do allow information about the Holocaust to be presented and allow students and parents to make decisions about it accordingly. I do the same with information about slavery. Oh, my. I don't take a position but allow for the information to be presented and parents to be parents and educate their students accordingly, run on sentences and all. Slavery? Oh, my God. If I was a parent, this would have started a whole new slew of emails on slavery. Like... Like, what are they doing? Okay, kids, this week we're going to be teaching teaching you about slavery in the U.S., so if you, you don't want your students to learn about that, that's cool. That's not a problem. And this was, what? Like, at what point do you draw the line? I mean, in, in his world, is anything factual? <laughs> I mean, is right. there proof of anything? Why have a school? No, and, I, I know well, that's taking it to the far end, but it's, right. it is pretty dramatic. Yeah. And, and we have to... I'm running up on the clock here, so we have to I wrap know, this up. I know. But... Um, but this speaks to the larger sort of post-truth world that we're living in, where mm, if yeah. if a person says, you know, that's fake news, then it is to a large swath of the American public. Um, or when lies are told as truth, they're just accepted. And mm. so we we have a we're we're at a moment here where take that 2017 law that allows any parent to come in and challenge, or any, sorry, any Floridian to come in and challenge the the stuff that's being taught at the schools and say, well, you shouldn't be teaching about, you know, the Holocaust anymore because I'm a Holocaust denier. I don't believe it happened. Now, from that point, it's not just, okay, we won't teach it. There's like a panel convened and they have to go through this process of determining, you know, whether the challenge is valid or not and all of this stuff. But so it's it's a, it's about a lot more than just, we could be teaching creation alongside evolution, right? Right. Even though those two don't even address the same question. <laughs> right. <sighs> or have the same level oh. of evidence. <laughs> right. Um, it, it's it's broader than that. And and I think, you know, we, to, to the point about like, well, you don't have kids in the school, so why should you care? This is why you should care. Um, all of our tax dollars go to the schools, whether we're parents or not. We right. all are taxed to fund education. And so we all have a, a stake in 
in that system and in ensuring that our students are properly educated about things as simple as scientific and historical fact. Well, we have a stake in society and just a, a human interest in our fellow man yeah. not being, um, yeah, led into a dark hole with no facts. I, it's, I mean, it's mind boggling, really. Yeah. I, I just, I, but again, I can imagine as a parent, how, you know, what the decision making process mm -hmm. must be like. Yeah. Trying to wade through. Yep. And so much of it is just an, an unknown, you know. I mean, our our kid isn't at the age yet where, uh, where sex ed is starting to be taught. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm gonna want to know what they're being taught in advance. I want to see that curriculum, um, you know, as a parent. I I'm, that's important to me. And so many just assume, as you'll as you'll hear this month when at the educational meeting, so many just assume it was like it was when I was a kid. And for a lot of those people who who grew up here in Polk County who had comprehensive sex ed when they were in school, mm. it's going to be a big shock Wow! that it's changed and they had no idea. I'm interested to learn that history and how long ago that change happened. Yeah. So, um, so let's wrap this up. We're running up on the clock here. But I want to end by saying uh, sort of uh, this broadly... Right, the atheist community of Polk County supports our public schools, um, but we do stand prepared to challenge you on church-state separation issues, and we're going to demand that our kids are taught scientifically accurate, medically accurate curriculum uh, across all subjects. Um, and if you're out there listening in, in Polk County and you have something going on at your school that you see that you think uh, raises a red flag and you want us to know about it and want us to take a look, please let us know. You can email uh, info at polkatheists.org or go to our website and, uh, and fill out the form. And we'll take a look at it and see you know, what sort of course of action we might want to take with that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming in and doing this. I appreciate Thank it. You. Let's do it this again. Pleasure. Awesome. Well, that's uh, going to do it for this Free Thought in Florida. And we'll be back at you again soon with some more topics. And uh, we'll see you then. 